Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Hiba and I'm a fourth year medical student studying at the University of Manchester. In today's video, I'm going to be doing my 1000 subscriber Q&A and I'm going to be answering some of your questions that I asked you to send in on Instagram or on YouTube. First of all, I just wanted to say thank you so, so much for subscribing to my channel if you're one of the thousand subscribers. I don't have a lot of content on my channel. I'm aware of that. I've only made about 20 videos um, since I started posting regularly about myself at medical school and about medical school tips or studying tips. So I'm really, really grateful for all of you that have subscribed and that have found my videos useful and want to see more from me despite it being very early days on my channel. So I'm really, really thankful and grateful to all of you. I'm really excited for this video because I've never done a Q&A video before. So let me know if you do enjoy it and hopefully there'll be more to come in the future. Also, I'm really sorry if my skin looks ridiculously shiny. It's because I got a chemical peel done on my face about a week ago and I have to put like a ridiculous amount of products on my face every single day three times a day so that's why I kind of look really oily um, so let's get straight on into answering your questions so I'm going to start off by answering the questions that I got asked on Instagram the first one is actually the first two are actually quite easy so the first question is how old are you I'm 22 years old and um, someone's asked, what year are you in? So I'm in fourth year of medical school. Um, it's just a year away from becoming a doctor, hopefully. So yeah, I got into medical school as soon as I uh, finished my A-levels. I didn't take a gap year or anything in between, which is why I'm 22 and almost finished medical school. So the next question I've been asked is by another YouTuber who's called Jaber. He makes amazing videos. I definitely recommend you checking out his videos. He does some excellent content on life advice, so that would be useful to any one of you watching this video. I'll link his channel in the description of this video. And his question is, can you please do a video on how to speak with your accent? Um, I never really thought I had an accent before um, I read this question. But now that I do come to think of it, all of the English YouTubers that I watch, they all have like a posh, more Southern um, English accent. So yeah, maybe I do sound different to you all. But um, I don't really see myself as having an accent just because... Um, Obviously, I've always spoken like this and I've lived in Manchester uh, my entire life and everyone around me speaks in, in like a northern English accent as well. So that's the first time I've been made aware of that. Another lovely YouTuber called Christina has also asked me a question. She's also a lovely medical student who makes YouTube videos, so I'll link her channel as well. Her videos are incredibly useful. Um, her question is, what is your favourite part of medical school so far? Um, that's a tricky question actually. I should have thought of this before making this video instead of just answering this on the spot. I'm not sure if this even answers the question properly, but my favourite part of medical school is seeing just how much I've developed over these four years, uh, comparing myself to when I was someone who just finished A-levels and started in my first year, and that compared with myself now. Um, I'd say like I'm just a completely different person and the just amount that I've learned it's quite incredible um, I'm not sure if that really answers the question I'm really sorry um, it sounds a bit like when Kanye was asked what's the favorite part of being a father and he goes the kids um, no I don't want to um, have a dumb answer like that but also the other favorite part of medical school would be the friends that I've made I have some really close friends that I would never have met if I hadn't uh, gone to medical school or hadn't gone to Manchester and I do feel like they're friends that I'm going to have for life so I'd say they are also um, my favorite part of medical school so the next question is what field of medicine do you wish to pursue this is one of those questions that as soon as you start medical school, everyone will ask you this all the time. Um, like from day one till the minute you graduate, like whenever you meet someone new, they'll always ask you this. Whenever you like change blocks um, as a medical student and go from one uh, placement to another or uh, you have to work with a new group of people, like this is the one question that you always get asked. I honestly at this point have absolutely no idea what I want to do. Um, 
and most people, most medical students won't actually know up until when they graduate and a lot of doctors won't even know in their foundation years, so in FY1 and FY2 they're still going to be deciding. There is the odd person that knows like from day one that they want to be like a neurosurgeon and that is it, that's all they're going to aim for and they never get their mind changed, but I'm definitely not like that. Um, I'm the type of person like whenever I learn something new that is exactly what I want to be and then when I move on to the next thing that's what I want to be now. Um, so I'm definitely interested in like every aspect of medicine, uh, which is really annoying because medicine is a career where you do end up having to specialize in one area because it is such a vast topic and vast subject where the details are just so many in number that you can't possibly have knowledge to that much depth about every single part of the body. At the moment, I'm just going through my placements and writing down which of the placements that I've enjoyed the most. Um, Overall, if I had to give an answer, I'd say I'd probably consider one of those few careers where you do see everything. So things like um, emergency medicine or um, GP or um, like acute medicine. Every time I do finish a placement with a specific specialty, I do write down a little bit about how my experience was in that placement and whether I liked the specialty or not. What I have learned about myself is that the part of medicine I like the most is the problem solving and the diagnosing part, like seeing the clinical picture and putting the pieces of the puzzle together and trying to work out what's going on. So in my notes, the specialties that I wrote that I enjoyed the most are um, A&E, gastro, ENT and rheumatology and rheumatology was a huge surprise because I didn't think I'd like it at all um, it's all about like muscles and joints but there is a lot of problem solving that goes into rheumatology and figuring out what the diagnosis is and I actually really ended up enjoying that bearing in mind I'm only reading out the specialties that I've been through so I still have a lot of specialties to go into such as obs and gynae um, GP, all of that, so I may end up enjoying those as well. These are just the ones that I wrote down that I've been through and I enjoyed the most so far. Gastro I really like because uh, as opposed to like cardiology or respiratory medicine where you're just looking at the heart or just looking at the lungs, gastroenterology encompasses like six or seven different organs, which makes it a lot more interesting and allows you to see a huge variety of different things. Um, and again, gastroenterology was a surprised to me as well that I actually liked it. I wasn't expecting to like it and the only reason for that was that I'd heard a lot about how gastro is the worst for like the atmosphere and like you have lots of different smells and like vomiting and all of that kind of stuff going on so that's why I went in thinking I'm probably not gonna like it but actually it was really really interesting and it involves a lot of problem solving. One specialty that I definitely know after being in medical school so far that I'm not interested in is surgery and that is very surprising to me as well because I was one of those people that went into medical school um, having surgery as one of my top preferences for specialties that I'm interested in and I thought I'd be quite well suited to it as well because I have like really good manual dexterity, I play piano, I do henna, um, I decorate cakes, I have a cake business as well. Everyone around me uh, as well told me that you're really precise and I also really enjoyed anatomy in my first and second years so I definitely thought surgery was going to be a top option for me but actually when I went into my clinical years and started uh, going into surgeries I found them um, I don't know how to say this without making some people angry, but quite boring. Don't get me wrong, surgeons are amazing and they are genuinely the people who are saving lives in medicine. They're incredibly talented people, but I just felt like surgeons don't have as much interaction with patients as I'd like to. Most of the time, surgeons don't really have any diagnosing to do. They'll already know what the condition is and what they have to do in order to treat this patient and what surgery they have to perform. Uh, so again, that takes away like the problem solving um, aspect of it. Also, when they see the patient, they've mostly already been put to sleep by the anaesthetist and they kind of just come in, do their job and then just go. But yeah, that's just my interpretation of how I felt. And of course, surgeons do hold clinics as well and do speak to patients and have appointments with them before their uh, surgery. But I just felt like it wasn't for me. Being in surgery as well, um, a lot of the times it's kind of a very repetitive process. And this may just be because of the surgeries that I've been exposed to. I know there are so many interesting surgeries that I haven't actually had a chance to be in yet. So maybe they could change my mind. 
in my experience as well the surgeons that i've been with haven't been very interactive with medical students and i've often just been told to kind of stand in a corner and watch uh, whereas i know some medical students are encouraged to come and take part in the procedure and help out with passing them the tools and things like that but i've never had an experience like that so that could also be influencing my decision here but yeah at this moment in time surgery is a definite no so yeah very long answer to a very simple question what specialty do i want to go into not sure yet, I am very very open to having my mind changed and my mind is always changed whenever I move to different placements and at the moment um, my preferences would be to be in a um, career that involves a lot of diagnosing and problem solving and um, interaction with patients and something that allows me to see all different specialties rather than being confined just to one. So the next question is, if you hadn't gone into medicine, what career would you choose? If I hadn't gone into medicine, I probably wouldn't have gone into any other science career. Um, not because I don't like science, I absolutely love science, but I feel like in science, medicine was the only thing that I could see myself doing. I did always say to myself um, in high school and in A-levels that if I don't get into medicine, then I'd want to be a policewoman. Um, which is very different to what I'm doing right now. Um, I'd also really be interested in like being like a detective or like a forensic kind of um, investigator, something like that. I definitely want to be in a career where I'm like solving things and figuring things out. Um, I think I'm definitely that type of person and medicine definitely involves a lot of investigating and a lot of um, tests and diagnosing and things like that so that would be my second option. I'd also probably focus a lot more on learning different languages. When you're applying to medical school you are only allowed to apply to four options for medicine uh, as opposed to the normal five that everyone else can apply to who isn't applying for medicine or dentistry. So my fifth option that I applied to do at Manchester was business and German which would allow me to do a degree in business and also learn German at the same time which I started learning earlier on in high school and in college but um, obviously I ended up getting into medicine and I didn't go for that option. Now I'm going to move on to answer a couple of questions that I got asked on YouTube. So the first question is can you work as a pharmacist and a doctor at the same time if you have a degree in pharmacy and medicine? So to answer your question I'd say technically yes I don't see why not. Um, you can definitely be a pharmacist and then go on to have a degree in medicine. I know lots of pharmacy uh, graduate students who are studying medicine um, at Manchester and to people who have done pharmacy for years that then go on to do a degree in medicine and become doctors. I also don't see why someone couldn't have a degree in medicine and then go on to do pharmacy as well. In terms of working as a pharmacist and a doctor both at the same time. So technically, yes, there aren't really any restrictions that would prevent you from doing that. But I'd say the only barrier to that would be it would be quite difficult practically to do that. So as a doctor, in most cases, especially when you're in your earlier years of training, it is a very full-time career. You have to do a minimum number of hours for you to be able to pass and go on to the next level of training and it is just going to be really difficult for you to try and work as a doctor and then also try and work as a pharmacist at the same time. It just wouldn't really work. Also, as a doctor, you are going to be doing a lot of the things that a pharmacist would do as well. Pharmacists are um, familiar with medications and everything in a lot more detail, but as a doctor, you are going to be like prescribing and looking at side effects of things and doing all of that kind of stuff as well. I haven't personally seen anyone who has done medicine and then wants to work as a pharmacist at the same time. So yeah, technically, yes, you could do that, but it would be very difficult to for you to work two different jobs, especially if you're in your earlier years of medicine and the career is going to be a full-time thing. You won't really have time to work as a pharmacist outside of the hours that you're doing medicine. The only exception for that would be that if you already have a degree in pharmacy and you are a pharmacist and you're studying medicine and whilst you're doing medicine you want to work as a pharmacist on the side to make some extra money, you could definitely do that as any medical student could do any other part-time job. The final question I have left to answer is, um, I want to be a neurologist and a psychiatrist. Is this possible to do simultaneously? And if so, how? You can do neurology and psychiatry at the same time. There is a specialty called neuropsychiatry, which you can specialize in, 
which is going to combine both neurology and psychiatry. I'm not the best person to explain how you could get into that career path just because I don't know enough information about it. I don't want to give you any wrong information. So definitely double check anything that I say, but I do believe you'll either have to specialise in neurology or psychiatry first, and then you can subspecialise in neuropsychiatry. Thank you for asking this question though. It is a really interesting question because the two specialties both are involving the brain and they're both really, really interesting but uh, clinically and like in hospital they are treated very very differently your day-to-day -day life is so different as a neurologist as it would be as a psychiatrist and the patients that you see are extremely different in psychiatry you mainly see a lot of mental illness and things like schizophrenia bipolar disorder depression eating disorders personality disorders and in neurology even though it's still involving the brain it's a completely different subject. You see patients with things like strokes and spinal cord damage and um, nerve damage in the rest of the body. So they are really, really different, even though they both involve the brain, but it's very difficult for you to be interested in one aspect of it and not the other. I can see why you'd be inclined to do both. Look up on neuropsychiatry a little bit more as a specialty. And I think most likely you'd have to take your pick between neurology and psychiatry first. Um, specialize in that and then subspecialize into doing both. Those were the answers to all of your questions. Thank you so so much for watching this video and for asking me your questions to answer in this video. I feel like I've just been talking for ages and I've given some quite rambly answers to um, your questions but I do typically do that if you meet me in person. I'm not actually sure how long this video will be when I edit it but I've actually been sat here for quite a while just chatting away. If you did make it this far then please can I ask that you subscribe to this channel if you're not already and if you enjoyed the video can you please give it a thumbs up as well it will really help me out. Let me know what you want to see more of on this channel. If there's anything in particular you want to see, just leave it in the comments. I do have some exciting ideas about what I'd like to make more videos on, but um, any of your suggestions are always appreciated. I really enjoyed making this video. Hopefully there'll be more Q&As to come. Thank you so, so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.